Hey everyone, welcome back to InfoGamer. For this video, we're going to keep building our Flappy Bird game. And in our last video, we showed you how to create the death zones for our game. We had one at the bottom of the screen or over top of our ground sprite. And we had one at the top of our screen. In this video, we're going to show you how to create the prefabs for the pipes that are going to be moving across the screen. And this is going to make it so that we can add score to our player when they successfully maneuver between the pipes. Or if they run into the pipe, it's also going to call, cause a game over, just like our other death zones. And so let's get started. The first thing that we're going to want to do when we're here in Unity is create a movement script. And this is going to be a script that is attached to any objects that move from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen. And so let's go ahead and start by creating the script. We're going to go create C sharp script and we're going to call it movement. And I'm going to spell it with capital M. And then let's go ahead and open that in Visual Studios. Once you have it opened in Visual Studios, we're going to want to create a new variable. And this is going to be for the movement speed. And so it's going to be a public flow. And let's just call it movement speed. Once you have that variable, we're going to create a function. And I'm going to have it be a void. And I'll call it movement function parentheses. Let's open it up. And inside this function, we're going to have one line of code, which is going to move whatever object the script is attached to from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen, or just to the left direction. And so to do this, we want to access the transform of the current object. So we're going to say transform dot translate, because we are moving our objects to the left. And so this is a function, and the parameter that we pass into this member function is a vector 3. And so one cheap way, to, well, it's not cheap, but it's an easy way to have an object move in the left direction is to call vector 3. You could probably, I think vector 2s would work as well, but you might as well use a vector 3, I guess. And then we're going to say dot left. And this is going to give us a value of 1 in the negative x direction. And so since we now have a 1, we can then multiply it by the movement speed. And that will give us the movement speed in the negative x direction. So I'm going to say times and then movement speed. And then we want to multiply this by time dot delta time. And so we're going to end this with the semicolon, and then we're going to call this function in the update. So let's say movement function parentheses semicolon. Let's go ahead and save this and go back to Unity. Now the object that we want to attach the script to is going to be the ground, but we're also going to want to attach it to our pipe prefabs that we're going to be creating here in a second. But if you have any other objects, which we might add in the future, say like an uh, extra point, you could have um, a worm. Since birds eat worms, you could have a worm that's just sitting in the air or a star or something like that. And that would move at the same speed as the pipes. In our abyss fish game, we were able to have a little fish, like a little glow-in-the-dark fish that gave the player an extra point, and we attached this script to that fish. So it would move in the same speed as the pipes and the ground. So let's go ahead and add this script to our ground. So I'm going to select our ground, our death zone ground, and then drag on our movement script. Then we can go ahead and set the movement speed. And for now, let's just try 5. We might need to have it be a little faster than that. I'm actually going to hit play and see how fast that moves. So that's a good speed for now. So 5 is good. Now what we want to do is duplicate the ground object. So I'm going to select it and then hit Control D. And then I want to drag it over to the right 
just so that they line up or are flush, flush on the edges. And the reason why we want to have two ground objects is so that when they move across the screen, when one leaves the left side of the screen, we can reposition it on the right side of the screen and have a continuous motion of the ground. This will give it the, a, the feel that our object is um, moving to the left, but we need it to keep repeating or else we would run out of ground and there wouldn't be a death zone. So let's go ahead and select our second ground and I'm going to make sure that it looks good. Now there is a little bit of a line but that's probably just due to the sprite itself and that the edges aren't perfectly um, even. There might be a little bit of a dark line that we're catching and that's probably what that is all about. Yeah, it looks like it's just a dark line on the edge. But the next thing that we wanted to do is have a transform in this position of our new ground object that we're going to reposition the ground objects to. And so to do this, we're going to create a empty game object and I'm going to rename it ground spawn. And then we want to child it temporarily to the second ground object and then center its position. Once you have its position centered, you can go ahead and unparent the ground spawn from the death zone ground one, number one. Now I'm going to rename it so that it's not parentheses one. I'm just going to name it ground zone death, death zone ground two. It's a little bit better. So let's go ahead and now create the prefab for the pipe object that's going to move across the screen. And to do this, what we want to start with is an empty game object. And this is going to be the parent object of the two pipes. And we're going to make it so that we can dynamically change the width between, or the gap, the size of the gap, and where the pipes are positioned. And so I'm going to first rename this object to just be pipes. The next thing that we want to do is center this object in our scene view. So I'm going to hit 0, and the x 0, and the y 0, and the z. Then what we want to do is add the sprite images to this object. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, hit create 2D object sprite. And I want to duplicate this object. And then I'm going to rename the first one to be pipe 1 and the second one to be pipe 2. Now we need to apply our sprite images. So I'm going to expand our sprite sheet, scroll down to our pipes, and I'm going to use the green pipes. And let's say pipe 1 is going to be the top pipe. So I'm going to select the one with the lip at the bottom, drag it into our sprite renderer, and then I'm going to select pipe 2 and drag the other sprite into our sprite renderer. So right now they're, they're really small and they're overlapping. And so I want to scale them both up in the Y and a little bit in the X direction. But first I'm going to start with the Y and you want the pipes to extend from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen. So probably 6.3 would be good for us. And then just so that they're not completely stretched in the y direction, and we want to stretch them a little bit in the x direction so they look a little more easy on the eyes. So probably right about there. I'm just going to make it three. Once you've scaled your pipes, the next thing that we're going to want to do is add a box collider to these objects. So I'm going to click Add Component, then Physics, and actually I want Physics 2D, then Box Collider. And you can see that when I zoom in on the pipes, 
there's a very faint green line that is exactly the same size as our sprite. That's because you can see that the size of our box collider has been scaled to fit the sprite image. So most of the time, Unity will do this automatically for you when you apply a 2D box collider to a 2D object. It's going to scale the box so that it fits the size of your sprite. Once you've done that, we want to make sure that we leave these objects as solid objects. We don't want to click the is trigger. And this is because we don't want the bird to be able to phase through these pipes. They're solid, just like the ground is solid. But right now, the problem that we're running into is that the pipes are overlapping. But in reality, what we want is we want the pipes to be end to end. And to fix this, there's a really simple way that you can do it when you're working in 2D, and that is to go to the Sprite Editor. And we're going to change the pivot point of our Sprite images. And so I'm going to select Sprite Editor, and then I'm going to zoom in on our two green pipes. And you can see that this little blue circle in the center of our Sprite image is the pivot point. And what we want to do is position it for this image down at the bottom of the lip of the pipe. And so I have X at 0.5, which we want to keep that the same because we want the pivot point to be in the center of the X direction. And then we want to make Y at 0, and that'll take it to the bottom. So 0 is the bottom of the image, 1 is the top of the image. And if you were to make it a point something, that would be that percentage from the bottom. So if I did 0.2, it would be 20% from the bottom of the image. And so for our other pipe, what I want to do is position that pivot up at the top of the image. And so I'm going to say 1 in the y direction. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And when I go back to our scene view, you can see that our pipes are now end to end. The last thing that we're going to want to do before we save this object as a prefab is create a script that is going to dynamically change the pipes and how they're oriented. And so I'm going to go to our scripts folder and then click on create C sharp script and I want to call this pipe setup. So let's open that in Visual Studios. Once you have it open in Visual Studios, there's a few variables that we're going to need to create. And so up at the top, I'm going to create a public float. And this is going to be min space. And this is going to be used for making sure that the pipes don't get any closer together than what we want the minimum space to be between the pipes. The next variable is going to be the opposite, the maximum space that we want between the pipes. And so I'm going to say public float and then max space. Now there's two more variables, and these are going to be to hold the game objects of our two pipes. And so it's going to be public game object, then pipe. Well, let's actually call it top and public game object bottom. Now let's go ahead and create the setup function. So this function is going to hold up all the lines of code that we need in order to set up the pipes. And it's going to happen every time a new set of pipes have been spawned in our scene. So I'm going to call it void, then setup is going to be the name of our function. And before we write any lines of code, there's some information that we need to get from our game in Unity. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then go back to Unity. And I'm going to create an empty object just to see what the transform of the bottom of the screen is. And so with this object selected, I'm going to pull it down until it reaches the very top of our ground sprite. 
And so right about negative 3.37, I'm going to say negative 3.35. And that will give it a little bit below the ground. Now to find the top position that we want the pipes to go, we grab our object and drag it up to the top of the white box in our scene view. So right about five, you can see in the, in the inspector, the Y position is round about five. And so it's actually exactly five. Now I'm gonna go ahead and delete this object because we only needed it to find those two positions. So negative 3.35 and positive 5. Now when we go back to Visual Studios, we're going to add a line of code in our setup function that is a float 10. And then we're going to set it equal to random.range. And inside this, it asks for two variables. One is the min value that we want to set and then the max value. And so this temp value is going to be used to save or to reposition the top pipe in the correct position. And so we want the min value to be the bottom of the screen minus the min space, because if the top pipe were at the bottom of the screen, there wouldn't be any gap for our bird to fly through. And so we're going to say negative 3.35F, and then we want to plus the min space. So that's the first parameter. Now we need the second parameter, which is the top of the screen. And so we can say 5 for the top of the screen. Then we're going to have a semicolon, and now we need to reposition that top pillar or top pipe at this position. And so to do this, we want to say top.transform.position equals new and then vector2. And inside this, we have two parameters. One is the x position and the second is the y position. And so the x position is just going to be 0 or center on our parent object, which is that empty object. Then the second is going to be this temp value, so temp. Now we close it with a semicolon. I spelled it wrong. Now the next two lines of code are going to be similar to these two lines of code, except for a little bit different. Now since we've already positioned our top pipe where we need it to be, we can now determine where our bottom pipe needs to go depending on how big we randomize our gap. And so for this next line of code, I'm going to create a new temp value, so a float temp2 equals random.range, and for the first parameter, we're just going to call min space. And for the second, we're going to call max space. So this will give us a random value between the smallest spot size that we want our gap to be and the largest gap size that we want it to be. Now all we need to do is reposition the bottom pipe this space size away from or below the top pipe. And so to do this, we're going to call the bottom dot transform dot position, and we're going to set it equal to new vector two. And the first parameter for the x direction is going to be zero, and the second is going to be temp minus temp two. And so we've taken the position of our top pipe and we are subtracting the size of the gap, which gives us the position of the top pipe, or the bottom pipe, sorry. Now all we need to do is call our setup function in the start function so that it will play through this function as soon as an instance of our prefab has been spawned in the scene. So in our start, I'm going to call setup 
the parentheses and a semicolon. Let's go ahead and save that and let's go back to Unity and what we want to do is drag this script onto our parent pipe object. So our pipes object. And then when I select the pipes parent object, you can see we have all our variables in our inspector except for the temp ones because those were private inside a function. And so let's set these values for min space. I'm going to go with two. For max space, I'm going to go with five. Mm, yeah, five. Now for top and bottom, those two variables, we want to make sure that we drag the corresponding pipe objects into those variables. And so pipe one was our top pipe and pipe two was our bottom pipe. Now when I go ahead and hit play, let's see what happens to our pipes. You can see that the gap has been dynamically changed or dynamically set. So at the beginning, before we hit play, they were together. Now they're, they're pulled apart. So let's see if it does a different gap or a different position. Yeah, so it's a little bit higher, maybe a little bit smaller. Let's do this a few times. Yeah, that one's way different. That one's up at the top of the screen. So now that we've done this, we can go ahead and drag our pipes object, the parent object, into a folder, but we need to first create our prefabs folder. So when I select assets, I'm going to hit create, folder, prefabs, that's what I'm going to call it, and then I'm going to drag in our pipes object into our prefabs. So it should look like that. Now I can go ahead and delete it from our scene. So this concludes everything that we're going to cover in this video. Make sure that you go ahead and save your scene into a scenes folder. I know that I haven't mentioned that in the past few videos, but I'm mentioning it now. It's really important that you save frequently because if anything were to happen, if you were to close Unity without saving your scene, then you'd have to kind of redo everything in Unity. A lot of your code should be preserved because you're saving that separately in Visual Studios, but you need to save your scene. And so right now I have my scene folder and my game scene saved, which is this scene. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. All right. So thanks for staying to the end of this video. We hope you were able to understand everything and that it was pretty straightforward. I know there were a few lines of code, especially in the setup function, which could be confusing. They involved a little bit of math and forward thinking about where your top pipe is positioned as to where your bottom pipe is positioned. If you have any questions about this video, make sure that you leave them in the comments below. If you need help or anything like that or suggestions for future videos, you're also welcome to leave those in the comments below. Make sure that you like and subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you next time. Bye!